Ladies and gentlemen, I am the Star Jammer J. Scott, and welcome to Beer Bash. We're gonna start off here with the Beer Bash Battle Royale, and let me tell you, this is just the first of many exciting matches we have lined up for you tonight, and I cannot wait to roll through them all. Starting off huge, of course, with one of my favorite kinds of matches in a Battle royal. And you can see the crowd already getting warmed up for this extremely exhilarating night of action we have about to get running. Look at this. Coming out first, Amber Arcade. Always a home, or always a crowd favorite, I should say. And it looks like that's not gonna be an exception as this crowd is more than happy to see her. And quite frankly, I am too, you know. She doesn't win all of her matches. Uh, I would say more often than not, she's on the losing end of things. One thing you can say for her is she is always out there putting smiles on the fans' faces, trying as hard as she can. And maybe this will be the opportunity that she's finally able to capture sending her into maybe you know a main event spot for an extended period of time yeah, she's waiting for the ring to fill up with her fellow competition Being the first entrant in a battle royal is never easy. You know, you're always worried about who else is gonna come down that ramp after you, thinking about all the other people that you're gonna have to fight off, you're gonna have to fend off. You just have to sit in the ring while the, while the field of competitors grows larger and larger. Diana Masters. And, you know, uh, Diana Masters and Ember Arcade, both competitors from the UK. You have to think that if you're, obviously a lot of competitors, since this is a ring class of show, you are gonna have, partially a ring class of show, so you are gonna have a lot of competitors from the UK. I would say that I myself am not widely liked in the UK due to my frequent mockery of their ridiculous voices. So I'm gonna do my best to try to keep the animosity of the wrestlers in the ring away from myself and on their fellow competitors. Although really I can't promise anything. Coming out next. We're getting loaded up to look at our next bit of competition. He's certainly making us wait for it, but I gotta say, I'm excited to see who's coming out next. She is Jessica, of course. Uh, our first competitor, not from the UK, but from a UK former company. How interesting. Uh, I've never been to Australia. Actually, that's not true. I have been to Australia. I've been to Australia two times. And I would say the people are very tough there, so I guess Jessica's gonna make things very difficult for the other people in that ring. And as I said before, you know, Amber Arcade, she's watching people just, she first she saw Diana Masters come out, and now she's seeing Jessica come out. She's got to be worried about the rest of the other competitors in this ring. And 
from Long Beach, California, Noah Parker. And here comes Noel Park out next up to make out the numbers. Not to make up the numbers, I should say. You know, I've uh, seen quite a few of Noel Park's matches during my commentary work in the CWL. But I'm tremendously excited to see how she does out here in other promotions. I gotta say, I would call her track record in CWL rather lackluster. Perhaps she'll be able to wow us all here tonight at Beer Bash. used to looking at the base of the War Boys, uh, two out of three of them, and this is the first match I'm actually going to see where I'm going to be watching the War Girl in action. And you can see she's scuttling into the ring, looking at her competition, pounding them out in that extremely intimidating way. If I was any of the other competitors there, I'd definitely have second thoughts about being the first person that I t about having her be the first person I tangle with when this match kicks off in a big way. She comes just as, you know, that music always creeps me out every single time. Stalk is her way to the ring. I believe this is, of course, Sarah LeBlanc. She has those just piercing, glowing eyes. I made it no secret, I'm terrified of Sarah LeBlanc. And I am, I am glad that my commentary table is a far distance away from the ring right now because I certainly would not want to be anywhere near whatever Sarah LeBlanc is going to do to the people in that ring. I wouldn't want it to happen to me. Mysterious. She's creepy, but most of all, she's deadly. And now we're just finally rounding out the numbers here as we see the last couple competitors begin to make their way to the ring. Chelsea, England. You know, I've never been there. Never been to, never been to Chelsea. 
I only learned recently there are actually places in England outside of London, which I thought the whole thing was just London. I thought it was like one of those things where, um, you know how you can have, what's, what's a good example for this? How like in, in Boston, for example, they call water fountains bubblers. I thought it was the kind of thing where if you're in England, you call it London. If you're outside of it, you call it England. I thought it was one of those. But there are more, there's more cities in there. There's, they've got a whole bunch of them. So this is a public service announcement for anyone who did not know that much like myself just a few minutes ago before I started the show. And that is where Ivy White is from, not London. And she is, of course, the ring class or women's champion as she looks onto the next competitor making her way to the ring. And then SZK making her way to the ring. Got that NIEW Women's Championship wrapped around her waist. The two champions making their way out one after the other. And you gotta think that despite, outside of just winning this match, there's gonna be a little bit of brand supremacy going on between these two champions. I mean, you certainly don't wanna get tossed out of the ring or pinned or submitted in any situation by the champion of another company. I mean, all of these women just absolutely taking the fist to one another in the opening moments of this matchup. I'll try to catch everything as well as I can. And over there you see Diana Masters, I believe, just cranking on the spine. Noelle Park getting flipped over onto her back. Amber Arcade over there has uh, Wargirl Frog hung up against the ropes. And I will remind everyone this battle royal is determined by being thrown over the top rope with both feet hitting the ground. There's no pins, no submissions in this kind of situation. Once you are thrown over the top rope and your feet hit the floor, you are eliminated. Oh, look at that. And we have our first elimination as SCK eliminates Ivy White. As I mentioned before, that is exactly the kind of thing that Ivy White did not want to have happen as the Ring Classic Women's Champion is eliminated by the NIEW Women's Champion. And then SCK looks like she has a serious grudge against Ring Classic going into this match. She immediately follows up after eliminating Ivy White, goes straight after Diana Masters, and now picks her up and just tosses her halfway across the ring. And over there we saw Amber Arcade catch Wargirl Fraga with that big neck breaker. Amber Arcade has seen what SEK has done to her countrymen. She's not allowed to let it continue with that huge release tiger suplex. And now Jessica looking to eliminate Noel Park. Looks like SDK doesn't care where you come from as she starts fighting after Sarah LeBlanc. Not a really wise decision if I had to say so, especially how weird she is. And the two relative freak shows of the match, Wargirl Fraga and Sarah LeBlanc now locking up. Sarah LeBlanc just hanging on for dear life there on the outside. Look, the tables have turned. Looks like Sarah LeBlanc has an opportunity to get Morgan Frog out of there. Jessica tosses Noel Park into the corner there. Hooks her up. Getting ready to get rid of her there. Oh, hold on. Sarah LeBlanc. What a Cobra Clutch backbreaker there, just dropping her over the knee. 
Hoist her up and tosses her out. Sarah LeBlanc has eliminated Diana Masters. And earlier over to the ringside there, Amber Arcade has also been eliminated. The field is quickly thinning. SCK has continued on strong. Now she turns her sights onto uh, Sarah LeBlanc here. Looks to catch her with the drop kick, but Sarah LeBlanc slips out of the way. Now it looks like she's made two enemies in the forms of Noel Park and Sarah LeBlanc. That is a danger of going into a uh, battle royal as a champion. You do have a target painted on your back. People see that as an opportunity to perhaps ascend into contendership for that championship. So SDK has got to be careful when she pisses off here. And what a widow's peak there from Jessica. continues to unfold. Sarah LeBlanc nails that chop on the chest of War Girl Frog, and the Frog fires right back with a chop of her own. Just going for a huge corkscrew shooting star press there, it looked like. But Noel Park was able to block it, got the knees up in time. And now Noel Park and SCK going blow for blow in the middle of the ring, standing right next to that Beer Bash logo. And it's Noel Park who takes advantage, catching her with that huge Hurricane Rana. But Fraga slips in from behind, catches her with the back suplex. And the eye rake from Sarah LeBlanc, oh my goodness. Oh, look at that! A lariat from Jessica from the powerful Aussie sends Sarah LeBlanc toppling out of the ring. Catches her with that boot in the corner. Kick right to the ribs. War Girl Frog looks to just be, well, she had wanted to land some stomps there to Jessica, but Jessica with that tremendous strength caught the boot and sent her flying to the outside. Or sent her flying away from her, I should say. It looks to send her flying to the outside. Oh, but catches her there with the drop toe hold. Frog follows up after nailing that move. Has her hooked up straight jacket backstabber. These are the last four women in this match. I do not know who is gonna come out on top, but look at that, Frog is making sure she's in the final three by nailing that Lariat and sending Jessica onto the outside, eliminating her from the situation. Noel Park with that insufferable dabbing Hurricane Rana there, or dabbing, I should say, a grounded leg whip. And now, SCK is looking to eliminate Noel Park, add her to her list of former conquests. People that she's already eliminated from this match, but Noel Park hangs on. War Girl Fraga being given some time to recover there. The question is, when she comes back up, will she assist SCK uh, in battling Noel Park, or will she go after SCK herself? SCK slips out of it there. Picks her up in a suplex position, turns it around, twisting Brain Buster, and it looks like War Girl Frog is taking advantage of the distracted SCK, looking to eliminate her. Has her hung up there, will she be able to toss her over? Not quite, not yet at least. And now has one foot firmly under the jaw. Oh, and now both of them, both of them, Noel Park and War Girl Frog are teaming up, but SEK not ready to be eliminated, battling not one, but both competitors off the apron. Fraga with a quick suplex there. Noel Park maybe not so wisely taking some time to gloat. And as a result, Frog was able to capitalize. Huge Bulldog there connects. Oh my goodness, and that step up super kick there, reminiscent of the Warboy Haas. Hooks her up and plants her down with that back suplex. SCK is back on her feet and she is not letting anyone forget it. She is ready to tear the house down.
Now just going back to exactly what she tried to do earlier, eliminate Noelle Park from this match. She has the boot planted on the chest, and she sends her out. She eliminates Noelle Park. It's come down to SCK and Wargirl Fraga. But SCK not willing to let Fraga rest on her laurels. Landing her with the overhand shot after overhand shot. But now it's Fraga who turns it around, nails the lariat, and wins the match. Wargo Fraga has become the winner of this Beer Bash Battle Royal. And this was an incredibly entertaining matchup. Huge maneuver after huge maneuver, a clash from so many people. Although, you know, the story of Noel Park and SCK throughout this match was really one to watch, but the way that Wargirl Frog was able to take advantage of the animosity between these two, come from behind with the victory was definitely something to be commended. I mean, extremely impressive work there. But up next, we have got, uh, as I mentioned before, the War Boys, War Boy Haas and War Boy Krom, looking to come to blows, of course. They both represent different promotions here in this conflict. War Boy Haas, of course, representing Wing Cla Ring Classic, and Krom representing NIEW. This is gonna be a clash for the ages. War Boy versus War Boy, and we're seeing it right here at Beer Bash. always tough for tag team competitors to go up against one another so you got to think that Warboy Haas is going into this match he's determined to win I'm sure but you know he has so much love so much appreciation for his friend his brother for Warboard Krom there but look he's ready to do what he, has to, what he has to do to win and I respect that I respect that even though he has a good friend a brother in Warboard Krom he is going to take him to the limit if need be very much going to be a clash of speed versus strength, and I'm going to let you guess who makes up each category. Uh, Krom, of course, coming in here with the huge hulking muscles. Haas, very much more uh, slim and compact figure, let's say. It's going to be a tough contest watching these two go at it. The trick here for uh, Haas is going to be having hit and run attacks. He needs to come in strong and fast with big moves, hit a lot of those running super kicks right into the jaw of Krom. If he gets caught, it's going to be over for him. Krom is going to ragdoll him across the ring and onto the floor like a, like a big, meaty mountain man he is. He's too ready to go at it. Sweeps the leg out from under him. Look at that, just planting the face onto the ground. Catches him with the foot there. Yeah, and this is exactly what Haas wanted to avoid. He is just at the mercy of the big man being stomped and stomped over and over again. That huge foot of Krom being planted into his back. 
Oh my goodness, and now just nailing him with that headbutt. And the leverage he had, because he started from that standing position, while Haas, on the other hand, was very much grounded. That has got to be unpleasant, I gotta say. If I had to call this one, as these two were, were coming down the ring, I would have called it for Haas, but now that Krom has caught him, it's easily Krom. Oh my god, and that sickening knee impact right to the face. Catches him with the boot there. Turns him around and just plants the knee right into the rib cage. Shot to the chest. Lifts him up and just slams him down with that side slam. Oh my god, what a brutal assault. Oh my god, super kick! Taking a bit of Haas's moveset as his own, and then picks up the leg, smashes the kneecap. This is exactly what Krom needs to do. Haas, the biggest threat he poses to Krom is his ability to move, his immense speed, his agility. If he, just, if he has his legs taken out from under him, he won't be able to move. He won't be able to get away from the offense of Krom. This is extremely intelligent work from the big man. But this time it's Haas who is able to take advantage by slamming Krom into the turnbuckle there. And now he shows him that that uh, damage to the leg was not enough. Kicks him right in the back of the head. Tosses him up against the ropes. And look at that drop down, beautiful job. Catches him with the Hurricane Rana. And takes it over there. Full Nelson slam there. Picks them up and plants them down right on the uh, tailbone and follows up with the rolling elbow straight. This time as Haas is able to take the advantage, catches him with the hurricane run, using the weight of Krom against him and now managing to put him down over and over again with the lariat and just jetting that boot right into the bottom of Krom's jaw, probably loosening a couple of molars while he's at it and following up with another one of those huge kicks. Could this be it? Absolutely not, barely even a two count. But look, this is the work that Haas has got to do if he wants to win this match. A Krom victory is going to come a lot quicker than a Haas victory. With Haas, he has got to keep battering him over and over with his best shots, nailing him with those kicks. And, you know, his height might actually add advantage him here because he's going to be able to get in those kicks neatly under the jaw every single time. And now, Krom turning it around, using his huge brutish strength to wrench in that single leg Boston Crab. But Haas, able to use his uh, wily agility to wriggle out of it and nail that boot across Krom's jaw. Oh, look at this. Chops, chops over and over again. Oh, and just poking him in the face there with that probing right hand. And follows up with that inverted DDT. Haas is going to the top. Could this be it for Crumb if he's not able to get out of the way? Oh my goodness, and nails the senton bomb. And he's done it! Haas gets the victory! He did exactly what I said he needed to do, and he got that victory in amazing fashion. Congratulations to one half of the War Boys, and what a victory for Ring Classic this is. Memories of this brutal conflict between these two men. It was just incredible from beginning to end. But you know, you know, at the end of the day, there's gonna be happy to be together as a tag team. I'm sure there's gonna be no hard feelings out at the end of this one.
What a triumphant victory for Haas there. They're gonna celebrate. But up next, we have got Annex versus a team I'm very familiar with, the American Dreamboats. Jason McKay, of course, the individual with the longer hair. Owen Parker, the individual with the shorter. And they are celebrating holding those Ring Classic Tag Team Championships high. They won them in incredible fashion, but they have got hell of a competition up here tonight. got the beautiful tag team championship around his waist and soon he will be joined by his partner now look i'm gonna put my animosity for this competitor aside and just try to enjoy this match but let me tell you something it's not gonna be easy for me always likes to make a show very theatric and really every aspect of his well, performance And here comes the other half of the American Dreamboats and the other half of the Blacklist Tag Team Champions. And his partner from Norfolk, Virginia, weighing in at 205 pounds, one half of the Tag Team Champions, Jake the Eagle. Well, you know, he's certainly very excited to be representing those tag team championships. Certainly very excited to be joining his partner, Matthew Ramirez, in that ring. You know what? I, I hope everyone in the audience is thankful that I'm that I'm biting back the venomous retort that I want to engage in. But I'm, I'm not, because I'm a professional, I'm mature, and I can move on. He 
is ready here. I gotta say, both Matthew Ramirez and Jake Eagle certainly like to engage in a little bit of self-appreciation there. You know, I feel like that the whole the whole theatrics, the whole ridiculousness, uh, it's a little bit excessive if you ask me. But this is starting off strong with McKay getting the early advantage over Ramirez, just planting him there. Sending him onto the ground. And plants that boot right into the back. Oh, over and over again. Look at that. Matthew Ramirez has got the bo both the arm and the leg hooked in there. But McKay, very capable, able to transition out of it. that kick right into the chest of Parker there. Oh, and look at that, following up with strike after strike. Sending him to the corner. One kick, and the lariat, and the flying elbow. And look at that, another flying elbow. What an exciting combination from these guys. And of course, one half of Anak has definitely got to be feeling the punishment there in the middle of the ring. That takes him over, pace him with the lariat there. And then slams him down with the suplex. and his partner. Got him hooked up. Nails him there, oh my goodness. back on the spine there. A very unpleasant experience on behalf of Jake Eagle. We're being dealt to Mr. McKay on behalf of Jake Eagle. Now the tag has been made. And what an arm breaker there over the shoulder. Tag has been made. Looks for the Larry and not able to get it. Okay, turns it around. Caught in the side of the head with that kick. Wow. 
what a suplex. Oh my goodness. Looking to fire up that roundhouse kick. Matthew Ramirez deciding to taunt after dodging it. Maybe not the best idea, as McKay is immediately able to follow up and plants him over the leg. What a gut buster. Into the corner. Makes the tag. Oh, Matthew Ramirez is about to be on the receiving end of a little bit of tag team offense. And look, I gotta say, I am not sad about that one bit. Toss him into the corner. Shoulder charge misses. Off the ropes there. And just plants him. Well, we all know what he's looking for here. I've seen him hit it a dozen times. Got him hooked up. Heat of the moment, swinging neck breaker. Referee currently distracted with McKay. Able to count the pinfall, but it looks like McKay is gonna get involved as well. Breaks up the pin. Matthew Ramirez and Jake Eagle both go straight for McKay. And McKay able to get uh, Eagle off of him there. Oh, we're just wrenching, wrenching on the fingers. And plants the knees. Into the corner. Catches him with the elbow. Jake Eagle has him trapped there. Oh, look at that. What a lariat. Leaping assisted lariat there with the help of his partner and smashed him with the DDT. Now wrenching on the neck. What a neck crank, look at the torque. Kick, locked in, got the Secret Service is applied. Secret Service is locked in, cutting off the oxygen here. McKay not getting involved. But able to break up the pinfall. Takes him over on the outside. Him with the lariat once again, but Jake Eagle able to dodge out of the way of that one. Oh my goodness! He said to McKay, He said, I felt those lariats now take one of mine, absolutely turned him inside out, and now he's got it in the Boston Tea Party. After taking a lariat like that, it could very well be the end for Mr. McKay, but he's able to get out of it, turns him around, flips him onto his back. Looks for the chop to the back of the head. Able to dodge it. Inverted DDT plants him. This match is heating up in all kinds of ways. Lariat followed up with another one out of the way and just leaps up and plants him down. I've made no secret about it. A tag team match is my favorite kind of spectacle and these two are going at it right now. And that's it. The Secret Services was able to finish off Mr. McKay there. And it's the American Dreamboats, those blacklist tag team champions, claiming victory over Annex. Here are your winners, Daddy Lush.
Sanchez, Matthew Ramirez, and Jake the Eagle. And look, it was a hard-fought, well-fought victory. Very impressive there. Congratulations to the Blacklist Tag Team Champions. But up next, we have the Beer Bash Championship, in which Aiden Bourne will be going up against the defending champion, John Spartacus. Now look, I've seen a lot of John Spartacus' matches. This will be the first time that I've been treated to a Beer Bash Championship defense. The following defense. contest is scheduled for one fall, and is for the All-Star Championship. Aiden Bourne, the Neverman, as it says on his shirt. And look, he's, uh, he's an interestingly styled individual, and I wonder if he'll be able to make that work today against John Spartacus, who is just as tough as tough gets. Centurion John Spartacus This is going to be... I mean, you can already see it in Aiden Bourne's face. He knows that he is going to do whatever it takes to win this title. He has all. He has, he has mustered up all the toughness. He's probably cracked a couple of beers before this match. He is ready to absorb some punishment and dish it out. But the thing is, John Spartacus is more than ready to reciprocate. Championship. Introducing the challenger from Limerick, Ireland, weighing in at 212 pounds, Aiden Bourne. Introducing the champion from Rome, Italy, weighing in at 156 pounds. He is the All-Star Champion, John Spectacular. John Spartacus looks like he's been cutting a little bit of weight recently. Not sure that's the best decision going into this Beer Bash Championship defense. that belt up high, letting everyone know what they're fighting for. And the man from Limerick is gonna go one-on-one -on -one against the Centurion. 
and starting it off strong, cutting him in half, slicing him in half with one of those Centurion Spears. But not quite ready to let that be the end of it. Hanging him up on the ropes. Kick to the stomach. Twists it around. Wrenching on the kneecap there with that dragon screw leg whip. Picks him up. And what an arm breaker. Look at that. Aiden Bourne is taking John Spartacus apart piece by piece. Goes for the high boot there. Bourne catches it. Another kick. Caught there. Pushes him down. And now he's got the knee bar locked in. Wrenching on the kneecap. Will John Spartacus tap? Will this be the end? No, able to get out of it. Or I should say he releases it. Looks like he knew he wasn't going to get the victory with that one. Didn't want to waste any more time with it. Looking for another way to deal damage. And just nailing him with these stops over and over again. Got a cave in his chest if he continues like that. And these fans are loving every second of it. John Spartacus got him up on that top rope. Oh, this is gonna be extremely unpleasant. Double underhook suplex takes him over, almost plants him in the middle of that Beer Bash logo. And follows it up with that kick to the back. Look for the pinfall, this could very well be it. Only a one count. I said it before, Aiden Bourne knew that this is his opportunity to capture that prestigious Beer Bash Championship. And he is gonna do whatever it takes. Take over there. He is gonna continue fighting until his body literally will not let him continue to fight anymore. and just drop some neck first on that top rope. Boots after boots there. And now picks him up, flips him around. A move made famous by an Aussie wrestler planting the uh, Roman one. and a Tiger Suplex. Two counts, but able to get the shoulder up. him around and now getting up onto the top turnbuckle look at that drops the knee on him from the top rope absolutely caving in the sternum of John Spartacus Spartacus mustering up his power sending him across the ring with the beel toss Two lariats following up with that third leaping lariat. And he's got him hooked up. Fall of Rome. Not quite enough to finish off Bourne. 
But the question is, if he nails one of those spears, will that be the thing that puts him away? He started the match with one and goes for another. Centurion Spear cuts him in half. But no! Ford will not be defeated. Wrench is back on the neck. And suplexes him. Beautiful job there. Ducks under. Giving Spartacus a taste of his own medicine with that leaping lariat. And sending him across the ring with the beel toss. He really is echoing every element of Spartacus's offense. Turns him around. Oh, but Spartacus pops right back up. And catches him with the boot right under the jaw. Sends him across the ring there. Oh, and look at that vicious stomp almost to the spine of Aiden Bourne. Double axe handle across the back once again. Looks like he's softening up the back to be planted by another one of those lifting maneuvers. Snap mare. And now wrenching on the neck. Vicious neck crank. Look at the torque. The heel hook is able to secure Bourne the victory. I got to admit, I did not see that coming. But Aiden Bourne is your new Beer Bash champion. And it, I told you, I said, he was going to give it everything he had until his body betrayed him. And he was able to get the victory over John Spartacus before that happened. Not enough to finish him. And it was Aiden Bourne who tapped out the Gladiator. Here is your winner and new All-Star Champion, Aiden Bourne. Up next. We've got SAM, Sam versus Isaac versus FVA. This is going to be a hell of a match. This is, of course, the quarterfinals for the Scepter Quest tournament. Making his way to the ring from Canada, 
Weighing in at 206 pounds, Isaac! You know, we have a lot of competitors who are from Canada. You know, not, not Edmonton, not Winnipeg, not Toronto, just Canada. And this is one of them, Isaac. As he storms his way into that ring, he is ready to claim the victory here in this match in advance to the next round of the Scepter Quest Tournament. ready as he always is to enact his own kind of brutal law in the middle of that ring and claim the victory. this victory more than maybe anyone else in this ring. He has got what it takes. I mean, he's exciting, he's dynamic, and I cannot wait to see him compete. Starts off with Sam and Isaac trading strikes. FBA tried to get involved, but these two are starting out in fierce competition. FBA nails that punch in the face. Caught with the elbow, caught with the knee. And now, knee strike right to the head of Isaac there. Slams in the back. Catches him with that high boot. into the corner. Looks for the Larry to the back of the head, not able to get it. FVA looks for the knee, not able to get that either. What a breaker there. Shin breaker followed up with the Larry onto Isaac. And Sam is in control of this match. 
got to say, I don't know what it stands for, the Sam. I'd love to ask him. Oh, springboard. Catches him with the stunner. FVA is dominating. I got to say, Isaac has definitely been the man who has had a hard time hanging on with everyone else. But maybe as he rolls back in the ring, he's looking to change that. As he picks him up with the flapjack, catches him on the top rope, but now it's Sam and Isaac who are the only ones in the ring. FVA had been forced to roll to the outside. And now look at that. Got the leg hooked up. Rolls him. Picks him up. Drops him on the back, back suplex. Picks up once again. Bates in there, flips under, catches him with the boot. Knee strike, boot again, sweeps the leg. Sam's got a head in quick to break this one up, and he does indeed. <laughs> that looks to catch the pinfall himself, right in front of FBA. But Isaac able to kick out before FBA can break up the pinfall. Turns him around, puts him face first on that turnbuckle. Oh, I know what he's going for here. Looking to get that perhaps avalanche powerbomb. Oh, oh my God. He's gonna, oh, I thought he was gonna powerbomb him right onto Isaac there. But barely misses him there. Turns it around, spikes him with the tornado DDT. FVA is out of commission. He can't break up the pinfall. This is it. And Sam is the winner. It was a quick one, but it was extremely fast-paced and competitive every step of the way. Extremely hard fought as we prepare to move on to, of course, our main event. Here is your winner, Sam! Of course, our main event. Several competitors that I am very, very familiar with. Michael Young and Eback going up against Ryan Quinn and John Spartacus. This is going to be a hell of a match. The following contest is scheduled for one fall. Introducing first, from Norwich, England, weighing in at 217 pounds, the Spring Classic Heavyweight Champion, the player E.
ready. He's ready to back up his partner here, Ebag, of course. And this was CWL, I doubt they have each other's backs, but this is outside of it. These two are gonna be competing on the same team to try to get the victory. So nice, you have to say it twice. Ryan Quinn making his way to the ring with that NIEW Intercontinental Champion. up above his head. He is showing every competitor here that he is going to take the fight to them. Or specifically his two opponents. Look, this is a hell of a main event. These are four extremely experienced and competitive tag team competitors. Of course, not all of them normally find themselves in a tag team situation, but they're not gonna let that slow them down or disadvantage them in any way. And now for the second time, we're gonna see John Spartacus come out to compete tonight. of his partner Ryan Quinn. Of course, these two have clashed previously at Endgame, but now this time they find themselves on the same side of things. And they will need to have it 100% completely together if they want to overcome both Michael Young and Ebak, of course. Michael Young, I gotta say, my favorite to be the difference maker in this match for obvious reasons.
Now it's time for Ebak and Ryan Quinn to come to blows. Ebak able to nail that kick right into the sternum of Quinn to start things off. The two big men are on the outside to start uh, the match off. And I would say the two high flyers, the two more agile members of each team are the ones in the ring. Nailing that lariat there. Sends Ebak toppling to the outside. Oh my goodness, and just planting the heels of Ebak onto the concrete of the ramp there. Very intelligent maneuver from Ryan Quinn, very backhanded, I would say. Turns it around and just plants him with that air raid crash neck breaker. Now, unless they want to finish things on the outside, they got to get back in the ring sooner rather than later. Slides back into the ring. Catches him there. Oh, and look at that. Just twists him around and plants that shin into the side of the head. Ebak's going to maybe look to make a tag soon, but he might not have the opportunity. Oh, he turns it around. I think Ryan Quinn is going to go for a little bit of tag team offense there with Spartacus. But Ebak has turned it around and sent Ryan Quinn into his own corner. But it looks like he's just daring him now, waiting for him to get up and then he's gonna beat him down in a serious way. Gets ready. Needs a little bit of that uh, gaming expertise to engage in a sixth sense assault there on Evac. Turns it around with the neck breaker. something you see every day. Michael Young springing off the top rope and catching him in that combination power bomb. I, I would go for the pinfall right now. I don't think Ryan Quinn would be able to kick out, but he turns this attempt to move into around into a jawbreaker, picks him in the stomach, hooks the DDT, and plants the crown to the head right on the ground there. All these competitors still relatively fresh. John Spartacus now, his towering frame going up against Michael Young in this instance. Snap Mare lands that knee to the spine. Drags him into the center of the ring. Oh my goodness, no, no way. Oh my God. Deadlift military press. Uh, John Spartacus has got to be nearly, oh, he's got to be more than 300 pounds. And then just plants him on that Beer Bash logo. It turned around there. And there it is, the fall of Rome. Smashing the face of Michael Young onto the ground there and now daring him to get up. Ready to turn him inside out with that Centurion Spear. And he does it. Will this be enough though? Ebak not coming in to save his partner. Michael Young kicks out, gets the shoulder up. And the fists raining fire right into the face of Young here. Such a competitive main event. Gets the hand up. Turns it around. Oh, looking for the choke slam, but Michael Young was able to reverse it into a Quinn shot, perhaps sending a little message to John Spartacus's partner. Looks for the Larry, catches a lot of it, but not all of it. Kips back up and sends him into the corner. Elbow strike into the Bulldog. Ryan Quinn eager, eager to get in, but the team of Ebak and Michael Young aren't gonna let that happen yet. Beal toss there. And now, John Spargus needs a little bit of a respite, tags Ryan Quinn in to perhaps finish off 
this match. Northern Lights Suplex just takes all the breath out of the lungs of Ryan Quinn. Nails the springboard moonsault, but John Spartacus is storming in to bring up the pinfall. Not necessary as Ryan Quinn is able to kick out himself. Oh, but we know he's going for here. A move that he's been using a lot recently. Turns it around, nails that NVIDIA driver. This time John Spartacus isn't wasting any time. Breaks up the pinfall basically before it can even start. Now giving him a taste of what he just felt, Ryan Quinn using that NVIDIA driver and then turning him around and planting his face, smashing the face of Evac onto the mat, busting him open hard there. Now I'm just waiting for him to get up before he unleashes any more additional flurries of offense. Check there. And what a neck breaker. Oh, but turns it around. He's got it locked in. He's got that choke locked in. Will that be enough to make Evac tap? No, wrenches on the hands and nails that fist right to the side of Ryan Quinn's head. What a Quinn shot. Enthusiastic Quinn shot to perhaps finish this one up. Michael Young isn't looking to break up the pinfall, and Ryan Quinn and John Spartacus are your winners of the main event. of exciting offense here. We saw that huge springboard moonsault from Evac. And he's not able to be broken up there. fought victory in every sense of the word and that was Beer Bash